So let's look at some of the headlines then in the media around the world. The Times talks about the Prime Minister's changing his approach to tackling coronavirus in the UK, introducing the drastic new measures. The paper says it could save a quarter of a million lives. Then we look at what's happening in France. We just mentioned Emmanuel Macron. He's on the front pages across all the main papers in France. This is Le Figaro with the headline, We're at war as Europe seals off its borders. Financial Times says the pandemic's caused another plunge on financial markets despite central banks' efforts to try and allay investors' fears with various action on Sunday and Monday. More business reaction on London City AM. Catastrophic is how it describes the outlook for the capital's hospitality industry. It explains the situations made worse by Boris Johnson advising people to avoid going out, but not ordering businesses to close down, which means owners cannot claim financial assistance. And then finally, with a ray of hope, the New York Times is among many covering the search for a coronavirus vaccine and shows one of the first people to to participate in a fast-tracked human trial. Well, today we have briefing regular Cornelia Mayer. She's chief executive of the business consultancy MRL Corporation, and she is joining us uh, from her home in Bern, Switzerland, because she couldn't get on a plane to travel to the UK. And uh, in a sense, you are in isolation for now, Cornelia. Tell us about what's happening in Switzerland at the moment. Well, we are in isolation. It's very serious. On Friday, four of our federal councillors, which is our ministers, we only have seven ministers, um, came on and said, look, you cannot, no more than 100 people, no more than 50 people in a restaurant, and, and you stay home, don't travel. And then this Monday, and I saw, I foresaw that, which is why I didn't board that plane. We had that conversation on Sunday afternoon. Um, on 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 the, today, this evening, they said when schools were closed as of Friday. Today, they said all restaurants closed, only um, only um, essential uh, shops that have essential health care, you know, drug stores are open and only f uh, shops for sh food shopping are open. If kids are at home, please stay at home, don't go out. Because in Switzerland, there's, there's more than 2,300 cases, isn't there? Uh, so far, uh, 19 deaths, I believe, maybe that number has gone up, which is is uh, more cases than the UK for a small country. It's it's a worry, I would imagine. It's it's per capita after Italy the hardest hit in Europe. You know, if you if you put it on per capita, because you know it's ten million people, so it's you know it's less it's fewer people than live in London. Um, so it it is a worry, and what the what the government is trying to do, similarly to what Boris Johnson is now trying to do, is spread. Um, you know, try to delay the spread throughout the population so when you have this distribution curve it doesn't spike all at the same time so the um, the hospitals can cope let's talk about the times then um coronavirus number 10 strategy switch may save 250,000 lives a very startling headline that some may find hard to comprehend it says more than a quarter of a million people would have died under previous plans to control the spread Talk us through this article. I, I'm actually not surprised about that because it says basically uh, the same reason, right? If you don't, if you spread it out and you don't have everybody at the same time needing intensive care, um, there are fewer people dying. When you look at Italy right now, if you look at Lombardy, they have to decide on is this person is this person's life worth saving or not? This is a triage, very very gruesome pictures. Um, so so this makes sense. What I didn't quite understand that we let it slide for so long because the, the, the government talked about herd immunity. But how can you have herd immunity in a virus where you don't know if you've had it, how long you're immune? So that seemed to me a rather courageous approach. And I'm glad we have, as you know, I'm also British and I mainly live in London. Uh, I am very glad we have come around and have, have more, now more drastic measures. But I'd like to also see children not have to go to school because they have, as they found out in Italy, in, in China and in Switzerland, they're the fastest spreaders.
Well, it's interesting, actually, because all my children are still at school. The schools are open where I live, just outside of London. And yet they did tell me yesterday that many of their friends are just not at school, where parents are taking their own, their own decisions to keep their kids at home, even though schools are still open here. But it's interesting, this figure of 250,000 lives will be saved because the change in government strategy. In China, there's uh, over 3,200 deaths uh, in South Korea, amazingly, 81 deaths and yet over 8,000 cases. You can see where countries have effectively managed to uh, stop the spread and stop the fatality of this, haven't they? Absolutely, and it takes draconic measures. You know, if you look, I mean, who would have thought that a country like Switzerland, you know, the haven from from all bad things happening in the world, would go into lockdown? It's very, very strange. So Le Figaro has uh, Emmanuel Macron on his front page. He's calling it a health war and very strong measures put in place in France now. And it was seen as necessary in France because even with all the warnings, people were still gathering and getting together and uh, socially uh, active. And so now they've had to lay the law down in France. No, absolutely, and he's very, very clear. I mean, you uh, you you get fined if you if you don't. You, you there's a form you can print out, and you need to sign that you're going food shopping. Otherwise, you cannot go out. Um, and um, and and it's uh, they have sent the, the army out in in. Um, in, in, in one in the Alsace where they have a lot of cases, they have sent a, a battalion out to help, a medical battalion to help with that. Um, so they're, they're very they're very strict. Um, and what I found very interesting, I listened to um, to President Macron's um, speech because being in Switzerland, I get French TV, um, and he basically said you should now everybody should now concentrate on what's essential and read. And, and just quickly, Cornelia, I'd love to get your take on financial markets. Financial Times, of course, looks at the global stocks being pummeled on Monday despite Fed action. And that action was a Sunday night announcement of a 1% cut in interest rates to virtually zero in the US. Uh, everybody seems unconvinced that this will help. Yeah, absolutely. And you saw you saw earlier um, over the last two weeks, the Bank of England were, um, uh, lowered the rate by 50 basis points and the Fed lowered the rate by 50 pa basis points. And that was just lost. I don't think these are measures that can be combated with um, with monetary measures. Yes, you will need to do some. You need to have some measures to ensure that you still have liquidity in the system. Otherwise, you know, banks go under and that that would not work. But I think it is more the fiscal measures and it is more the, 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 the programs, the targeted programs for the parts of industry such as airlines, such as hospitality, such as small retail who are hardest hit that will probably give us the most bang for the buck. And I have argued for a long time, since about 20 12 or so, that that central banks should raise the rates again so they have more um, ammunition when the next crisis hit comes. And boy, did it come. All right. We're going to have to leave it there, Cornelia, but thank you very much indeed. And I hope you're not feeling lonely there in your in your home in self-isolation. Are you managing? I, I, how could I when I get to talk to you? It's always a pleasure and uh, we you. shall see you soon, hopefully, back in this studio when all this uh, does uh, get better. Thank you so much. Cornelia Mayer joining us from her home in Bern, Switzerland, as opposed to her London base, of course. Uh, we've heard